on TV. I don't know how I'm supposed to do this, but welcome to everybody who's here. Sound sounds very muffled. He just has to get a little closer. Is there one speaker here? We're trying to have a road in the Hang on now. One second, Dan. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Can we come up now? We're going to start. We're going to get started. Can I get you to move up closer? We've only got the TV screen. Okay. Please. I'm very glad for those who invested their chops to make it happen tonight, especially uh, Andrew Johnson and Carl Hunter and, and Mike Moore, wherever he is. I guess he's running around. Um, so we're glad that you're here, and we especially are glad to welcome Thomas Moore, who's the filmmaker of the evening. And uh, we actually, I guess no one has seen your pilot yet, right? Just you and your film editor. So uh, we're all going to be treated with getting to see this. Uh, and dare I mention that a couple of scenes were filmed here? Uh, and there, I mentioned it. At any rate, thank you, Thomas, for, for being a part of this and letting us see. We, we were actually pricing 83-inch screens this afternoon, but our budget is too tiny, so that's why you're seeing it on 32-inch instead. But uh, let's hope that this makes it all the way to the screen. Okay, and, and uh, enough said, but afterward, Andrew, you can MC this. <laughs> Lutheran Church here. Hey, Chelsea, there we go. So just a little, little tweak on the microphone. Here's all I can get back here. Get nice and close and in with, with all of you good people out here in Hollywood. Welcome, welcome. To, welcome to Hollywood Call Back, everybody here. The world premiere of Thomas Moore's groundbreaking short film. Actually, a short film here for Razor. We really thank you guys for showing up here to us. It's, it's really a blessing. Uh, right over here, actually, this this was a diner at one point in time. I don't know what happened. I think there was an accident of some kind. And I had to shut down. There's like some kind of there's some kind of something happened. I think, and and in order to illustrate what I think happened, I think the man best suited to do so would be Mr. Thomas Moore. Well, please, will you take the stage. <laughs> Thank you all for coming out to see our little show tonight. I want to thank uh, Hollywood Lutheran Church because I was literally on the street looking for a church. I was going door to door. I live around here. I was knocking on church doors looking for a church that I could find, a, hopefully a, an altar and a, a choir loft. Uh, more about that later. Uh, but I, I want to thank Pastor Dan, uh, especially my uh, cast and crew. Some of them turned up here tonight to see it for the first time. Uh, to check with Joe, if you would, to get a copy of the DVD, if you haven't already. And my background is uh, mainly, I'm a writer. I published five books. Two were national bestsellers in my home country, Canada. And uh, one, one day, I was a high school teacher by trade, a student of mine committed suicide. Mm. And I, it, it affected me in a manner that I, I still carry around to a certain extent. And when I look at this script, it opens, the first scene is in a church with a girl about to commit suicide. That's a happier outcome than the actuality that affected me, my student. But uh, the other thing I wanted to say was that uh, the book that prompted this was called Angels Crying. It was uh, just recently translated into Chinese. And it was used as a, it is being used as a case study in four university schools of social work, dealing with social workers, helping them understand the nature of sexual abuse, which is what caused the, the girl's death that I just mentioned. My own evolution as a writer took me to uh, the City of Angels, here with you, Angels. And uh, I, I'm a full-time student at Los Angeles City College. I'm graduating this term, filmmaking, producing. And uh, the, the razor that you're about to see is a shortened version, a concept, of the full-length feature film script that I finished and uh, that hopefully we'll be producing. This is more like a pilot, I would say, give you an idea of the, uh, the concept of the story. It's uh, 11 and a half minutes long, and uh, perhaps we'll just play it now, and uh, I'd be most interested afterwards at the social to hear your thoughts and comments about it. So, without any further ado, I'm going to turn it on, the lights. and uh, lights please, and we'll play a razor. <coughs> Last 
Powerful. Well done. Very cool. Very cool. There you have it. There you have it, folks. All right. I just wondered if you had any questions or comments, or we're still tweaking it now. We still spotted a couple of little, I think we forgot to give credit to Beethoven there in the, in the final credits. I think we missed Beethoven altogether. We've got to get fixed a few little things. But if you see Beethoven. anything that you could <laughs> suggest to us, please talk to me or Joe. You can contact me uh, either here or uh, on my website, thomasmorewriter.com. You can see the other types of things that I write about. My books are there. So, if there are questions, we'd be happy to try to answer them. Did you wonder how we got a choir loft in this church? No. <laughs> but I might have because I was there. <laughs> we should have been responsible to get that organ up there. It would have been up there three weeks ago. Yeah, all right. You faked it. It was very clever. Uh, how long was your shoot? I'd say one day down here for the diner, and one upstairs, maybe four hours each time. I'm guessing. Yeah. Okay. Edit. Super duper. Thanks for coming out and we'll chat some more. Hopefully you'll stay well, for a glass of wine and an hors d'oeuvre, yes, sir. How long was the edit? Back to, yeah. Well, the edit was more of a back and forth thing. It took about four or five weeks. Maybe longer, because Christmas intervened. Yeah. Super duper. And are you, new, are you a new feet? I sure am. Ah, I'm a Vancouver guy. Are you? Yeah? Okay. So, so Great. <laughs> Good stuff. Tom, what are the next steps for you? Well, we're going to use this to help promote it, promote the concept. What we're looking for now is a distributor so that we'll be able to go to a producer and fundraisers, and get some money, and a producer. We really, I suppose I should say, I really don't know a lot about the industry except what I've learned in the last two years. So. The next step would be, well, I find that everybody knows someone who knows someone who's a producer or in the industry. So if you do, it would be very good if you could either show them the DVD if you have one, or put them in contact with me. I'd love to be able to meet such a person and discuss the possibilities of full and feature on that same theme. Does that answer your question? That's what I'm looking towards. Anyone have the, the feature link, the screenplay has been written? Yes. Mm -hmm. Tom, where's where's your passion? I mean, this is not like, well, you've written a number of books, but I mean, this is based on a screenplay that you've already written, which is based on a, a nonfiction work that you've already published. So is your passion just to get this one story told, or is your passion elsewhere? To I think, uh, good question. My life has evolved into now I want to make uh, screenplays or films. I want to write screenplays if necessary and make movies for people to watch. I'm a writer by instinct, but I'm noticing that a lot of people don't read books anymore. But they all go to theaters. They all watch movies and they'll talk about movies, but they won't be talking necessarily about the last book they've read. So I think I'm called in that direction. I was in another desert over in Doha in Qatar where I was a college instructor, communications, for the past five years when I realized it was time to make another move. And come here. So, following the things that really excite me, like this girl's death really excited me in the sense that I knew that there was something wrong. There were no answers to why she died. She's beautiful, she's 15 years of age, uh, with life in front of her, and she decided to end that life, and I couldn't rest till I discovered why. So, I spent three years of my life tracking down the story. Why would she kill herself? She was in my class one June. When we come back to school the next, this is high school I was working. The next September, when I come back, yeah, September, they're taking her body out of the harbor, and no one can say why. What happened? Mm. I found it unacceptable. Mm. And it turned out she was a foster child. It turned out there were no parents involved. I started my research, and uh, I met her parents. Both were alcoholics. Both had had all their children. She had siblings who were taken away by social services. They'd get them back, taken away again, on the next big drunk. So my book led me in different directions. Then the government changed in Newfoundland. There had been a scandal in a, uh, an orphanage, best way to put it, a, a Catholic orphanage. 
There had been a scandal and a royal commission was set up. The government changed and the new government wanted to put their mark on the inquiries. So they expanded to include all foster homes. Little girl in my story, that I had been plodding around going nowhere, was a foster child. So all the documents became available to me, in Canada anyway. It's a public inquiry. Those documents are now public. So I could get the social workers' files, the RCMP investigators' notes, wow. the court documents, everything. So I, instead of having nothing, I went from nothing to stacks of documents. So it became my next book, my second to last book. And it, uh, it, was, uh, it caught on. So I, when you're excited about something, it's not like work at all. It becomes a, a well, passion, to use your word, a pleasure. So that's what I'm doing now. I want to pursue this as well as other things that interest me and excite me. All right. So nice for you to come out, have a look at Razor with me tonight, and I'd appreciate your thoughts and comments afterwards. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you. Jessica, yeah. Hi. Um, first of all, I wanted to say um, I had a lovely time um, filming this, and I am so honored to be a part of this. Um, my name is Jessica, and I played Nicole, just in case you didn't know. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, but also, I also want to let you know that I'm doing a show right now called Sunday in the Park with George. Many of you might know the show. <laughs> it's, um, but we're doing it at Still Hungry Theater um, over at the complex. The Dory Theater over the complex in Santa Monica. Santa Monica. I'm, okay. I'm so bad with directions. In Hollywood. In Hollywood. Yeah, so it's like only really like 20 minutes from here. Uh, on Santa Monica in Hollywood. Yes, that's what I meant to say. And so I just want to let you all know that because it's a wonderful show. It's only going one more weekend. We just started this weekend. It's a very short run, but it's really a wonderful show, and people have been having a wonderful time at it. It's just really really fun and really interesting. It's by Stephen Sondheim, in case you know, know him. Um, so yeah, if it would be wonderful if you could all, if you could come see it, if you would like to. You know, I just want to let you know the information that it's, it's there. So it would be lovely to see you there. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, go for it. Tobias, take the stage. Hey, uh, yeah, just a quick one. I have to go, but thanks for the film, Tom. Uh, good fellow Canadian making stuff. That's awesome. And uh, uh, <laughs> anyhow, um, I have a studio down the street with some friends. It's uh, studio5216.com at 5216 Hollywood Boulevard. And every Sunday around 8 o'clock, we have live music, live bands. And they're pretty mellow, unplugged, kind of rock and roll. Sometimes girls, singer-songwriters, a girl on the piano, a girl on the guitar. Really mellow. Mostly. Sometimes a little rock and roll. But So that's tonight at 8. Everybody's welcome. There's generally no cover. I'm pretty sure there's none tonight. And a really cheap little donation bar and uh, art. Art in the studio. And then also, we, uh, we're we kind of a, a filmmaker, musician group down there too. We do jams every other Friday. And uh, it's open mic unplugged from spoken word to comedy to uh, rock and roll again, but unplugged. And then Wednesdays, We've been doing a script reading group where uh, people bring 10, 20 pages of their, their works in progress, mostly feature films, and we have a selection of actors, and you just hand out your sides, and people read, and uh, it's a great group of people. Some of the writers and directors, we have three, have stuff in progress, one, uh, one up in Canada, actually. So, that's it. Thanks. My name's Tobias. Uh, my number's on the sign-in sheet, so you can feel free to call me, and uh, 8 o'clock every Sunday, Studio 5216 Hollywood Boulevard. Thank you, Thanks. Cool.